Science has long reigned as the field that never stands still. Research, experiments, observations and analysis have ensured that we are never far away from the newest scientific revelation that could rock the foundations of previous scientific discoveries to their cause. From the weather to ancient history to space, we are always learning and so the field constantly moves ever forward in the search of the newest discovery. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be looking at three recent discoveries and what they might mean for those of us watching these developments unfold. Our Sun's Twin Our Sun lies at the heart of the solar system, and it's no secret that it's massive. Scientists have figured out that the Sun is around 110 times the diameter of the Earth. This means that over one million Earths could fit inside the Sun. Researchers have come forward and said that when our sun was born 4.5 billion years ago, it had a twin. However, this twin sun was not identical. Harvard scientists have said that this was the same with every other star in our universe. It has in fact been proved that many stars do have companions. Astronomers are now focused on trying to understand whether binary and triplet star systems are born that way. Astronomers have been searching for the sun's twin. This star goes by the name Nemesis. It's even been suggested that Nemesis is the reason behind the KT extinction. One of the largest mass extinction events to happen on our planet. It's also become known as the Die of the Dinosaurs. It's been theorised that Nemesis pushed an asteroid into the orbit of Earth. A research astronomer from UC Berkeley said the following. There probably was a Nemesis a long time ago. We have searched and tried to find out where this star resides. The system where this star would be has either broke apart or shrank. This other sun, however, would not have been near the current one. It's thought that at one point in time it could have been 800 million miles away from Earth. An idea is that this sun most likely escaped and then mixed with other stars in the Milky Way's region. As mentioned, this isn't science fiction either. Other researchers have come forward and said that this is not the first time that the idea that stars form with a companion has been suggested. A research paper is going to be featured in the Royal Astronomical Society. This will look at the origins of binary and multiple star systems. However, although this theory does have its supporters, there are those that don't believe in the nemesis theory. Some researchers have come forward and said that after studying craters, it doesn't back up the nemesis claim. Regardless, studies are still happening to try and prove the existence of this hypothetical star. Rethinking the Neanderthal Cave in France When you think about a Neanderthal, what first comes to your mind? Perhaps an ancient and unintelligent human? Well, you might want to think the latter part. Deep underground, scientists were able to discover some dark caves in France's Aveyron Valley. However, they were not just any regular caves. They were man-made structures over 176,000 years old, which was about 150,000 years older than any structure that had been uncovered before. That could only mean one thing. They were built by none other than the Neanderthal. This fascinating discovery changes the entire way that we see these ancient hominids, Whereas we previously associated them more closely with primates than humans, it turns out that they might be closer to us than we expected. But just how was it determined that Neanderthals were capable of building such caves? It all started in 1990 when explorer Bruno Kowalszewski squeezed through a tunnel to arrive at the Brunekel cave. After crossing animal bones and water pools in their path, he finally stumbled upon a startling scene of crushed up staglomites that were arranged into two ring shapes. All around these rings were indications of burnt bones. Immediately, he suspected that this was not naturally occurring. But when did this exactly take place? A carbon dating of a burnt bare bone revealed that it was about 47,600 years ago, which made it older than any discovered cave painting. Though it seemed impossible, that put it right in the age of the Neanderthal. 
To further prove this, another cave lover named Sophie Verhaden decided to uranium date the stalagmites. It turns out that the stalagmites were crushed up by people more than 176,000 years ago, which was further back than anyone had anticipated. While it was never determined what these Neanderthals were trying to do, it was evident that they used fire, were capable of building things, and most likely had tools by their side. Suddenly, they might look a lot more familiar and less unintelligent than before. Perhaps humans were never so different from the humble Neanderthal after all. The Moon is Shrinking Earth's moon was formed around 4.6 billion years ago, and it's always in synchronous rotation with Earth, which means that we always see the same side of the moon. The first unmanned mission to the moon was in 1959 by the Soviet lunar program, with the first manned landing being Apollo 11 in 1969. Due to its size and composition, the moon is sometimes classified as a terrestrial planet along with Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. In the summer of 1994, the moon was very extensively mapped by the little spacecraft Clementine and again in 1999 by Lunar Prospector. In recent years, there has been a special interest in the dark side of the moon. This popular term refers to the fact that the same physical half of the moon is always facing Earth, which in turn means that there's a dark side. Recent NASA scientists have come forward and said that they've discovered something interesting about our moon. They said that it's shrinking and shaking. They've said that their studies have shown that the inside of the moon has shriveled up and that deep cliffs can be found all over its surface. What's interesting is that this recent study suggests that the moon could still be shrinking. Researchers have also come forward and said that the moon's surface crust is brittle and that due to the moon shrinking, it's starting to break the surface. One of the senior scientists at NASA said the following about this discovery. Our analysis gives the first evidence that these faults are still active and likely producing moonquakes today as the moon continues to gradually cool and shrink. Some of these quakes can be fairly strong, around 5 on the Richter scale. The scientists have also been using high-detailed images to help the discovery of other faults. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter camera has snapped over 3,500 images and these have helped scientists to understand what's going on on the surface of the moon. Some photographs in particular have shown them that there are bright patches and scraps on certain terrains. These small details are showing the researchers that recent quakes have happened on the moon. These moon quakes can last up to an hour and have been known to send boulders rolling down cliff slopes. One researcher said that around 20-30% to of the moon quakes were most likely generated by built-up energy from these faults and that they didn't think this had happened from naturally occurring space debris like asteroids. NASA scientists have said that they are keeping a close eye on this seismic shaking. This recent discovery was published in the journal Nature Geoscience. But what do you make of these interesting discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.